the world is currently going crazy over this online game called Wordle. I have no clue whether that is still a thing by the time that you're watching this, but anyway, the goal is to guess a five letter word. Whenever you made a guess, all those letters in your guess that also appear in the correct answer are highlighted in yellow. If they are also in the right spot, they are highlighted in green. You have six guesses in total, and that's pretty much it. That's Wordle. And today, we will create our own game of Wordle using Pygame. All right, I have two text files here. One is called dictionary underscore wordle dot text and the other one is called dictionary underscore English dot text. Now the wordle dictionary contains all of the possible solutions to wordle, which have been handpicked by the creators of wordle and they are in alphabetical order here. And the other dictionary, which is actually much larger, contains the most common words of the English language and it's some eight or 9,000 words. And here, at towards the bottom of this dictionary, there might be some pretty uncommon words, which you wouldn't really guess if you were playing the game of Wordle. So it wouldn't really be good to use this dictionary for the solutions, the answers to Wordle. But if we only use this dictionary, the user might want to type at some point a word, which is a correct standard English word, but then the computer would say, I don't know this word, this is not real, you can't guess that. And then it's kind of sad, so it, it makes sense to have both of these dictionaries. And if we didn't constrain the user in what he or she was able to type into the Wordle game, then you know you could just make a fake word or just type in all the vowels as your first guess to really get going. But the, the fun really is you know, that you can only really guess actual words, and this is why we are having these two dictionaries. So in our Python script, which I call main.py, our first job will be to import these or to load these two dictionaries. And to do that, we'll just define a simple function, which I'll call load underscore dict. And here we'll have one parameter, which is the file name of what we are importing. Note that I stored or saved both of these dictionaries, these text files in the same location as where I stored my Python script, otherwise this wouldn't work. So now we'll say file is equal to, well, open and then the file name. And once we've done that, we'll say the words of the dictionary, we can get these by reading every single line of the file. So we will say file.read lines. And for now, let's let's just see what that returns. We've got to close the file first and then we can return the words. So let's say D is equal to load dictionary and let's go with dictionary, the Wordle dictionary, wordle.txt, and then we'll print D. And here's that. Now you can see that all of the words, they have been imported, yes, but there's these line breaks because if we go back over here into the text file, well, they are stored on separate lines and we don't want to have these um, line breaks in our you know, Wordle game, so we have to get rid of these. And the cool thing about Wordle is that every single word in this list has five letters, so we can really just return the first five letters for each word and that's the trick. So what we'll do is we'll go here and say, well, just return the first five letters. And we can make them uppercase because in Wordle, everything is uppercase for word in words. So we'll just use a little list comprehension here and let's run this. And now you can see that D, the dictionary that we just loaded, it contains all of the words from over here but they are now all uppercase and they don't have any line breaks anymore. So we are now able to import these two things. Let's create two variables. I'm gonna be mixing uppercase and lowercase um, letters a bit here in my variable definitions. I'll mostly be using uppercase because it's global variables, but I'm not super consistent in that. So I'm sorry for that, but I think you'll, you'll understand everything because I mean, th the total project will only be like 150 lines of code or, you know, it's not super large. Anyway, we now have the dictionary for guessing, which will be the standard English dictionary. And then we have our possible answers, which is the Wordle dictionary. Let's run this. We don't get an error. This is working nice. And then, well, let's pick a random word as our answer. So here we'll say random dot choice of the answers dictionary and for this to make any sense, we have to import the random module and then we'll print our answer here. So now it has slain, no hardy, 
now showy purge so this is actually giving us words that could be answers to the wordle game and once we've done that we can really start coding the, the gui actually because i mean we could code the game first and then do the gui but i kind of like doing it simultaneously because you can really see how the game builds up one step after another so let's import pi game import pi game and we have to define a bunch of variables so we have the width i'm going to make that 600 pixels nope not import and then we'll have the height and we'll make that 700 because the game um, it's kind of like it's a little bit taller than it, what it's wide it's typically played on phones so at 600 700 you know should do that justice and then well from here well we can already initialize pi game so pi game init we'll also initialize fonts in pi game because we'll be typing stuff obviously so we're going to initialize that and we can set a little window caption so pi game pi game dot display dot set caption and we'll set that you know to wordle um, okay and then we have our animation loop animation loop let's scroll down here so animating is equal to true while animating what is it that we are doing while we are animating so we are drawing a background background here we'll say screen dot fill white and well i'm already referring to the screen even though i haven't defined it yet so this is something that we have to do up here create screen and here we'll say screen is equal to pi game dot display underscore uh, no dot i always mix these up set mode and then we have to define a tuple of how large our screen is which is the width and the height and then we we fill our screen and then the important part here is that before we run that we have to tell pi game when we actually want to get out of this so what we'll do here is we'll say track user interaction and then for every event in pygame.event.get so this is just telling python you know watch out for anything that happens with the mouse with the keyboard and so on and then you know we'll have closing the window well stops the animation stops the animation that's what i'm going to call it and here we'll say if event dot type is equal to pygame dot quit well if that is the case we'll set animating to false which means that after this last iteration of the while loop we'll exit out of this because we are no longer animating and then the pygame animation will be over and lastly I must not forget this we have to update the screen i mean right now it's just white being painted over white but later on this will be where all of the action is and this will be dynamic so we gotta update the screen so screen dot um i think this is in pi game this is simply display dot flip and there we go this was our screen unfortunately i got an error has no attribute display well, the problem is it's not screen, it's pygame.display.flip. And there we go. We now have the white game screen. To make things a little bit easier, I really like this. Um, let's introduce the option to close the window, not only by clicking on the top right, but by also just pressing the escape key. So here we'll now say user presses key. So we are in the track user interaction part. Here is where we can close the window, but now we are watching out for the user pressing a key. So else if event dot type is equal to pi game dot key down. And then we have the different, whoop, gotta be like this, the different keys. So let's begin with the escape key. Later on, we'll add more escape key to quit the animation. And we'll say if event dot key is equal to pi game dot uppercase key underscore escape in that case animating is equal to false and the same thing should happen as if we were to click up here so now i'm going back into the middle of the screen hitting escape and we can close the window nice so the next thing that we'll do is we'll try to draw the squares onto the screen where the letters will go 
And to do that, we'll introduce a little margin from over here. So a variable that controls how far, how far in the first square starts and when we stop over here. And then we have another margin up here, which controls how far in from the top. And then another one down here, which we'll then use to display the correct answer towards the end of the game or at the game, at, at the end of the game. Okay. So up here where we have width and height, we'll now also introduce a margin for, um, well, actually a bunch of margins. The first one will be the gap in between the different squares. So here we'll just set that to 10. We can play around with this later. And then we have our top margin, which is how far in from the top, because I want to display the unguessed letters at the top of the, of, of the screen. So here we'll have the top margin, and I'm going to set that to 100. Then we'll have the bottom margin, which is where we'll display the correct answer in the end. I'm going to set that to 100 as well. And then we have the left right margin. And here I'm going to choose also 100. And then we'll go into our um, animation loop here before we update the screen. And here we will now say y is equal to the top margin. And then we'll say for i in range, well, we have a total of six rows. So six guesses. So we have to loop from zero to six. And then we'll say x is equal to the left right margin. So this is where the first square will have its top left corner, top margin as y and left right margin is x. And now we'll say for j in range, well, every word consists of five letters. So we have to draw five squares. And now we'll simply draw the squares. And then we'll say square is equal to pi game dot rect, it's a rectangle at the x, y location, at location x and y. And now we have to specify the size of the rectangle of the square. So here I'm just going to set that to square size and then we'll define square size at the top. And then we'll say pi game dot draw because we don't only want to define the square, but we also want to draw it. We'll draw it onto the screen. We'll give it a color. I'm going to make this gray, even though we haven't defined gray. But we'll do that in a second as well. And what is it that we are drawing? We're drawing the square and let's give it a width of two. Okay, so up here, we have to define a bunch of things. First, we'll need some colors. Right now we are only using gray, but while we are at it, we might as well already define yellow and green. Now for gray, I'm simply gonna choose 70, 70 and 80. Then for green, I'll choose, hmm, I played around with these values before and found one combination that I quite liked, 6, 214 and 160. And then we have yellow, which will be 255, a lot of red in there, and then 209 and 102. Okay, once we've got that taken care of, let's go down here after we initialized everything, because now we'll say that the square size is equal to, well, we have the width that is the largest it could be, but obviously we want to fit a bunch of squares onto there and we have the margins in between. So we must subtract four times the margin because we have five letters in each word and we have four margins in between the five squares. And then we must also subtract from the width two times the left right margin and then divide that by five, and this is the size of the individual square. So it's kind of determined by the width of the screen and not the height because the width is more narrow than the height. Okay, and then we'll say, well, actually that's it for now. Let's just run this and there we go. We got our first square on the screen. Now, why is it only one? It should actually be more. Um, the problem is that we are not updating X and Y. It's always staying the same. So down here, we'll now say, that x is updated to, okay, this must be within this loop here. So x is plus equal square size plus the inner margin. So let's run this. There we go. We have now have five squares in a row. Let's also update the y, but this has to be in the outer loop, not the inner loop. So y plus equal square size plus margin. Let's run this. There we go. We now have the five, the six words, actually six words and five letters each. So 30 squares in total. Awesome. So now it's time to 
take care of writing or actually displaying fonts onto the screen. And here we'll now define a font and we'll do that using pygame.font and then I'll access the systems fonts using sys font camel case watch out here and here I'm going to choose free sans bold free sans bold and now we must specify how large we want this to be and I'll just choose square size because we want well the letters to fill the entire square but just to be sure let's also introduce a smaller version of that which is only half the square size okay and then once we have that Let's introduce all the other variables that we'll need throughout you know, coding our game. There has to be some kind of input, which is what the user is currently typing. We'll initialize that to an empty string and later on we'll just append to that string. Then we have to store the guesses, which is the words that the user has already guessed. I'm just gonna make that an empty list for now. Then we'll have an alphabet and We'll just use that later to determine the different colors. And here I'm now just going to type out the letters. I know that you can import these from, what's it called, string, I guess. But yeah, and then ASCII string, uppercase, something like that. But here I'm just going to type them out. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, B, W. And how many letters am I now missing? X, Y, Z. I hope none. And then we have to somewhere store the letters that the user has not guessed already because we want to display them on the screen and before the game starts well this is obviously simply going to be our alphabet and then lastly we'll have another variable which is the game over variable this is a boolean which at first is equal to false okay so let's go back into the drawing part up here so here i'll, I'll call this um draw squares and guesses or simply draw guesses. I think this is all we need. Okay, so we already have the squares around the letters. Now it's time to actually add the letters to that as well. So letters that have already been guessed. Letters or slash words, slash words. And now we'll say if, okay, so we are starting at I at zero and we are looping all the way until six. Now at first, there aren't any guesses, so this would throw an error. So we can only actually draw stuff to the screen if i is less than the length of the guesses, of what we have guessed so far. And then we'll say color is equal to, for now we'll just set it to gray and later on we'll have to take care of you know the color in which the squares will be colored. And then we'll say pygame, pygame dot draw a little rectangle on top of what we have you know this is really just the surrounding box what we have drawn up here and now we're filling in that box with color so we'll say pygame.draw.rect onto our screen and the color that we just specified another square which is what we have up here so we are reusing that but this time i'm not specifying a width because the width that just makes it the frame but now i'm not specifying a width which will then cause it to be entirely filled. And yeah, then we'll say letter is equal to font.render. And here we'll now go into our list of guesses and we'll pick the ith guess and of that the jth letter. We'll set this boolean to false, which takes care of some stuff that we don't need here. And then we'll specify a color and I'm just gonna make that white. 255, 255, and 255. Now we want our letter to be in the center of this little square, and we can do that by you know, getting the surface of our rectangle here. So we'll say surface letter dot get the rectangle around that, and then we'll center this in our in our square. So we'll say x plus square square size half, half, and then y plus square size half and this should plot it directly into the center and now we can blip this to the screen screen dot blit letter onto the surface let's run this we get an error because i forgot to add i into this here let's run this no error this is nice but also no letters and that is because we haven't 
we don't have any guesses, right? So this is just an empty list. So let's just be crazy and type in some stuff here. So I'm going to go with apple, berry, and mango. Let's run this. This is another error. What's the problem this time? Going back down here, pi okay, this is just a typo. But notice how we are now inside this loop because this is now a non-zero length. Let's run this again, and there we go. It now says apple, berry, and mango. Great. To make this a little bit more pleasing to the eye, I'm going to round off these corners here of these boxes. You absolutely do not have to do that, but, but I just like doing it. So what I'll do here, I'll specify a radius, a border radius, and I'm going to set this to three. And then down here, we'll do these, the same thing again once, once more uh, actually up here. So border underscore radius is equal to three. Let's run this again. And now you can see it's slightly rounded off. And I think it looks a bit prettier. Anyway, the challenge, not the challenge. The interesting part now is to see whether the different colors will work. So now let's, let's try yellow. Let's run this. Yes, they work. We now have a bright yellow color. And let's go for um, green. This works as well. So we have all of the colors ready. But that's enough for now. I think this video is long enough and I'll leave everything else to another video. See you in part two.